Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Uh, today we're going to talk about a 125,000 year old bone engraving, which may belong to a Denisovan, and if so, it'll be the oldest example ever, period, of Denisovan art. So here's a picture of it here. This is the uh, bone fragment, and you can see some of these engravings. Um, it's very, very interesting stuff, and I think there's uh, more some pictures from other angles uh, further down in the um in the article uh but th this was found in china and this part of china right here the hunan province here uh which is basically sent the central plain of china and um i i've said many times in other episodes of uh when i cover the denisovans is that it's largely um, believed that the Denisovans and Neanderthals uh, made their home in e a bunch of different parts of East Asia. And I also mentioned that in, whenever there's a discovery in China, it's very, very, uh, it takes a while before it surfaces and it becomes part of the mainstream. So uh, I don't know exactly when they first uh, uh, discovered this this artifact just because of the nature of how archaeology and paleontology uh, functions in China. But again, I also mentioned that they're becoming more and more, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, lax and more open to other opinions and other having other scientists come in and, and give their take and also help out with certain excavations. Uh, so again, it's very, very interesting um, how this is all playing out. So uh, two animal bone fragments decorated with abstract engravings date to about 105,000 to 125,000 years ago. And the etchings of the bones are filled with ochre, providing the first ever evidence that ochred engravings were produced for symbolic purposes by late Pleistocene hominins in East Asia. Um, for the most part, uh, for, for artifacts such as these that require a certain level of creativity and abstract thought and some level of cognitive function um, all of these qualities were reserved just specifically for homo sapiens uh, people like us but now it's first it was speculated and it was theorized that neanderthals had this capability as well now um, they're they're extending this toward denisovans and any other uh, uh, member of the genus homo and now that this is becoming more and more accepted, this idea of a hominin other than sapiens having uh, abstract capa capabilities of abstract thought, now the question becomes, well, were they more advanced than us in terms of abstract thought? Were they, did they exceed our abilities? And are we, instead of being the special chosen one that evolved this ability, maybe we're just the last ones left with this ability, if that makes sense. Uh, so anyway, the researchers don't know for sure, but again, th add this to the long list of evidence that points toward uh, that the Homo sapiens aren't the only ones with this capability. Um, although uh, it's not known for sure, the researchers strongly believe the archaic hominins behind the artwork were indeed Denisovan, and that's because the bones were found uh, in the same rock layer that two ancient hominins, hominin skull fragments were also found. And those skull fragments are strongly, strongly to be uh, to belong to a type of Denisovan. And many, many uh, paleontologists and anthropologists and scientists are arguing this. Uh, quote, a growing body of genetic evidence indicates that Denisovans, and to a lesser extent Neanderthals, occupied most of East Asia before the arrival of uh, modern uh, humans. The skull found at Lingjing in the same layer in which the engravings were found is an archaic hominin with no Neanderthal features. So because of that, the chances are high that he or she is a Denisovan. And if that's the case, then there's a strong uh, possibility that those engravings were made by the Denisovans that were in the area at the time. Uh, the De a little bit more background on Denisovans. They were fellow members of the genus Homo and were only discovered in 2010 from a bone fragment found in Siberia. Um, the only known handful of bone and tooth fragments, we still know very little about these mysterious hominins. However, we do know that they mated with our ancestors, and I did a video about that. 
And signs of this interbreeding can be seen in the people of today because, of course, I've always talked about this, a uh, certain amount of DNA from a certain amount of people, it, mainly from Asia and Polynesia and Australasia, they have a certain amount of Denisovan DNA. Denisovans also uh, crossbred with Neanderthals as well. So we have this weird picture of, uh, of individuals in, from the members of our uh, genus Homo, a ge the genus that we share, now there's more and more uh, theories that are going to be piled on as if like, well, if we could, how different were we from the Neanderthals and Denisovans if we were compatible enough to not only mate, but have viable offspring as well. So we, the genetic distance must not be that far from each other. Um, if the artwork was created by this group of hominins, it is the oldest example of Denisovan art to date. They found ancient jewelry as well, uh, mainly in Denisova cave but those are not nearly as old, which only dates about 40,000 years. So there is a period of about 100,000 years between this jewelry and these animal engravings that Denisovans must have not only been around, but they must have been some, they must have been successful to the, insofar as that they are able to spend time making abstract art. Now that's indicative of a lot of things, although there's a lot of assumptions like, a civilization and cities and and trade and a code of ethics all of these things these are all assumptions but if those were the case if someone were to make the case then the first step in that is this capability of abstract thought so it's very very interesting how the, this is playing out again um, I mentioned this earlier it's often assumed that Hobo, homo sapiens were the most cognitively advanced uh, compared to other archaic humans but um, these newly discovered uh, bones, decorated by Denisovans, assume, uh, assuming that they were, would mean that these ancient humans had brains complex enough to use abstract designs to display information or symbolism. Um, so instead of, again, I mentioned us earlier, instead of us being the chosen ones, it seems like that we're just the last ones left that happened to survive this crazy cataclysm that wiped everybody else out of, off the map. So that really changes the perspective on how we view our own species. Very interesting. Um, although we know that these etchings were created intentionally, we don't know the, the exact information they represent. Um, the markings on the bones are not simply the result of butchery either. They've been carefully created on weathered and not fresh bones. Okay, so that's a big deal. Because if they were, if they were just butchering them, then it, it would indicate that they were... The, the marks would have been made on a fresh bone, but it's not. These were weathered old bones. Uh, that's a big, that's a big, big uh, point there. Some of the lines were produced uh, using multiple strokes to make them more prominent. Again, same as you would when you're making a piece of art, when you're drawing something, you would uh, make, do the same strokes over and over again just to make it, them appear darker and more prominent. Um, the ochre accentuates the markings, also indicates that the designs were intentionally created rather than simply being byproducts of cutting meat. So there's a rhyme and reason to all the different marks that they made. Um, again, these findings are significant because they suggest archaic humans living in China were capable of abstract thought more than 100,000 years ago. Um, Many scientists uh, argue that our species evolved solely in Africa before dispersing between 80 to 60,000 years ago. Um, others are starting to believe more and more that there were numerous groups of Homo sapiens that evolved from other archaic humans in both Africa and Eurasia concurrently. So this scenario would explain a lot of holes that are not explained in just the single origin, everybody's from Africa, all Homo sapiens are from Africa theory. Um, instead, it would be because Homo erectus was uh, ubiquitous across continents. So that would make sense from this perspective would, would make sense if Homo sapiens evolved. They did evolve from Homo erectus, but not in the same spot. They must have evolved in different regions concurrently from the same the same species from Homo erectus, uh, presumably Homo erectus. And then from there, they just branched off. And that would explain why they, even though they were separate, they're not different because they have viable offspring. 
we can uh, mate with each other. So it's very, very um, uh, a, a, an important piece to, to again, clearing up the, the, this uh, low resolution picture we have of 100,000 plus years ago in terms of the state of the human species. Uh, these engravings support a scenario in which the production of key cultural innovations is partially or entirely disjointed from the taxonomic affiliation of the populations who produce them. So this scenario entails that there is not a before and after in the evolution of human cognition, but rather multiple steps crossed at different times by populations evolving within different regional traje trajectories. That's basically um, where they're getting at now, that this path of human cognition and evolving this cognition was embarked on by our ancestors and depending on the region and the timing they evolved independently in different directions but along the same human cognitive evolutionary path does that make sense so it's like they they uh certain humans automatically embarked on this evolutionary path depending on their region where they were so for example if there's Let's talk about Siberia. Ty Siberia at the time was a very habitable place. Uh, and because of that, they're allowed to procreate. They could continue and pass on their genetics and they could thrive for, for millennia until one day Siberia becomes Siberia now. And because of these environmental factors, those people had to either, they either died and that was it, or they had to uh, move to another region, which is most likely what happened. And then their evolutionary path becomes interrupted, whereas perhaps another region, let's say Australasia, there's a, a group of humans there and they're continuing that trajectory. So again, this must have happened all over the world concurrently. And depending on the environment, uh, certain groups were, were either interrupted or they, their trajectory changed. So anyway, um, this has long been speculated by a lot of paleontologists and anthropologists. Um, let me know what you guys think of this. This is a huge, huge discovery. Denisovan art, if true, 125,000 years old at the very least. So that is really, really interesting stuff, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments about the Denisovans, about their capabilities. Does this change your mind about the whole debate? Um, do you guys have any theories? Have you read any other theories? Let me know in the comments and I'll talk to you guys later.